Williams for. Climate activists head for an oil terminal on the banks of the Thames in Essex. They are protesters from the controversial Just Stop Oil Group. The aim to break in and disrupt operations. The so by your please, like, please, well, I think you should maybe. Get a job. What is worth more, art or life? For Just Stop Oil, join us on Just Stop Oil. It's been decades, decades of inaction, right? And now we've had enough and we're going to put a stop to it. So we have to just stop oil now. Just Stop Oil describes itself as a non-violent civil resistance group demanding the UK government stop licensing all new oil, gas and coal projects. The group was founded in February 2022 and began protesting at English oil terminals in April 2022. The group has received particular attention, positive and negative, for its methods of activism. They stopped all our work. Do you know how much that costs us? What, what, are, they, what are they achieving? They're mental. They're just holding the country to ramps and... Just Stop Oil began with a campaign of trespass and sabotage to disrupt fossil fuel infrastructure. 88% of global oil and gas reserves are controlled by the OPEC cartel and state-owned oil companies, primarily located in the Middle East. In this documentary, I hope to have conversations with activists within the group and get more of an insight on how they feel about the way the public perceive them. We mean business, and so you can join us. Hi, I'm Max Brown and I'm here in Manchester. I'm currently on my way go to the Just Stop Oil social meeting. During our meeting today, I will meet a variety of different Just Stop Oil members. We are also going to explore the way the public perceives the group and the current backlash that they have on social media and other mainstream media. So. My name's James Skeet, I coordinate media for Just Stop Oil. Well, joining me now is James Skeet from Just Stop Oil. Joining us now from Just Stop Oil is its spokesman, James Skeet. Well, we're here now to give his side of the story is James Skeet, who is a spokesperson for Just Stop Oil. I entered into the campaign uh, back in the 21, early part of 2022. I mean, if you speak to a lot of other people, they kind of, they, a lot of people have this kind of like light bulb moment where they kind of go, oh my God, fuck. I kind of, I got very politically activated probably when I was uh, sort of like early teenager, really. I worked in finance for about eight years, which was not a good fit. But I, through that, I kind of, was, I learned how like the economic system works and I learned how much it basically is fucking everyone. Uh, in this country in particular, you know, you've got five billionaires that own 80% of the UK media there are about. And they use their influence to basically control the narrative that we're exposed to. Yeah, it's quite quite difficult in order for, for us to get our message out. Basically our position is, is that like and, and my experience with this in general is that the media will only really cover you if they can vilify you. You have this kind of like activist dilemma to a certain degree where you kind of like you know, we could we could sort of target our actions more. Like, oftentimes people will tell us, "Why don't you sort of target your actions at like the, the real, like the real culprits? Like, yeah, take, yeah. It to, the, take it to the politicians, take it to the oil terminals." The very, but the, the problem is, is that we did all of that. You don't really get very much media coverage. Whereas if you start to engage in kind of more public disruption, you basically force a conversation in the wider culture, um, and it's sort of through that that you get some sort of political discourse. As a general rule of thumb, people tend to disassociate the the activists, for want of a better term, from like the yeah. from the message. The message yeah. itself. Yeah. Which is, you know, makes sense. And also like the, the, the fury about sort of getting held up in traffic tends to dissipate with yeah. time, but the yeah. the message itself sort of stays there. So in effect you're you're kind of like you're forcing an issue to the forefront of public yeah. consciousness. But oil and gas licenses on the front page of the tablets, you know. Yeah. Um, the, the Daily Mirror had a, like a, a, a 
front page recently about the oil, oil and gas licenses and it just stopped sooner. There's no way that that would have happened if we hadn't been yes. doing that. And like, it's, it's sort of taken that relatively niche issue and like forcing yeah. it into the public discourse. <laughs> My name is Mary and I'm a second year student at the Uni of Manchester and recently joined the Just Foil campaign. Definitely the first time I took action. There was a lot of people in my life who didn't get it or who were angry with me, but yeah. essentially like what I always say is that the future that I'm protecting by not acquiring a criminal record or like um, just making a fool of myself by doing random yeah. interviews or whatever. Like that future doesn't exist in the current situation we're in, um, and like having productive conversations like that has meant that people in my life have understood what I'm doing and also feel moved to like do something as well. I understand where the views of the general public come from because. The way that the media portrays Just Stop Oil is a bunch of, am I allowed to swear? Yeah, yeah, swear. A bunch of <laughs> posh cunts who don't have anyone else's like best interests at heart. And like that's totally fair enough because I also used to think the same thing because it's in the government and the media's best interest. It, without sounding like a conspiracy theorist, obviously it is in their interest to keep making money from fossil fuels um, like GB News and all of these big news companies that are the ones saying don't trust these people, they just want to stop you getting to work, they're all bankers, whatever. Those are the people being funded by the very industries that we're trying to stop. So it makes total sense that people are against just oil because that's the information they're being fed. It's, it's, it's not the fault of the individual and it, it's unfortunate and I think there's a real shift in the movement at the moment of how we can change that public attitude and personally I would like a lot more work to be done to bring people on side because like this is a fight that we have to win for all of us. Yeah, that's great. Nice, okay. So. Hi, I'm Rishi. Um, I grew up in India, but I moved to the UK about five years ago, um, and I'm a student here at the University of Manchester. I mean, there's kind of deeper reasons of feeling like quite helpless about the way the world seems to be going and wanting somewhere that I can channel my motivations. Yeah, we've had our fair share of abuse from you know, strangers or like less closely related friends. Um, and yeah, it's always a tough thing to cope with. Um, we have our like strategies of dealing with it, but yeah, sometimes it's just a bit, yeah, it can be quite emotionally draining to be yeah, yeah, a part yeah, of a yeah, yeah. organization that you think is doing a lot of good, but some yeah. other people don't agree. Yeah. yeah, it's shocking. I mean, you just see these awful, awful headlines which just dehumanize us as these kind of like eco zealots who, you know, thrive off family money and don't have anything better to do with our time. I mean, you just read it every day. In fact, you get to a point where you stop reading it because it's just depressing. But also, in a way, like, we kind of have to thank them because it is partly because of the media that we've got so much attention and I think like it's through like such a constant like negative reporting of just the oil that we've been pushed up the agenda so much. Yeah it's, it's always tough like committing yourself to something like that but just like know that for a lot of us involved it's been like an amazing set like source of um, community and love and um, feeling like you're actually doing something that has a positive effect. I mean, it's because I, I think all of us feel climate anxiety to some extent, but yeah. that feeling is like much better channeled into something useful. Um, and yeah, if you just meet a few people and just like, oh, like I think you'll eventually realise that they're all pretty sound. As I come to the end of my documentary, I am pleased with the conversations I have had with the activists inside Just Stop Oil. Through my research and networking in the group. I have learned a lot about climate activism as a whole. I am looking forward to seeing what the future holds for Just Stop Oil. Thank you for watching. <laughs>